Now, the worst parasite infection is the amoeba, the brain-eating amoeba, and it can cause fatality, and we usually get it through swimming in lakes, or warm lakes, ponds, or rivers, or streams in the summer, especially with skiing or diving. When you ski or dive, that water, that infected water with the neglaria amoeba gets up in through your sinuses and goes right into the brain and causes a horrible brain infection. Welcome back to Dr. Colbert's broadcast, and I'm here with my dad, Dr. Don Colbert, my mom, Mary, and my wife, Meredith, and we are talking about parasites still, unfortunately. But we are going to learn some fascinating stuff, like how can we kill these things naturally? So, Dad, tell us how do we kill these parasites naturally? Well, there's simple things we can do. We can first get our keep our immune system strong by taking a good multivitamin that has about 3,000 international units of vitamin A that keeps our immune system strong. We can take zinc. Zinc charge, supercharges our immune system about 11 to 15 milligrams a day, which is in our uh, enhanced multivitamin. Take a probiotic, which keeps our mucus layer built up, so t uh, parasites are less likely to attach to it. Take fiber, because the fiber literally pushes them on out. The longer they stay in touch with the gut, the more infested we can get. And then take those pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds are amazing. It has this cucurbitin phytonutrient that literally paralyzes those worms. So when you paralyze them and then use the fiber, boom, they detach from the colon and then it just pushes them right on out. Great way to do it. Now you can also use herbs. There's different herbs you can use. You can use wormwood, you can use black walnut, you can use clove, as well as oregano, as well as garlic. These are all antiparasitic to help get rid of worms, along with the pumpkin seeds. You just chew them up a teaspoon once or twice a day, and those work great together. But my one of my favorites is one called Parapurge that or have dewormers in them, finbenzazole and ivermectin. It's over the counter. You just take one usually three times a day for about 10 days, and it just rids the body of most all worms. It nukes them. Yeah. It nukes the parasite. <laughs> that's what I... That's what I like to hear. You know, it, a lot of those clove, um, oregano, those are yeah. things that people can buy at the grocery store. Sure, absolutely. Just including their food. So they, they have, have, yeah, their exactly. Food, their anti yeah, yeah, I like combined uh, antiparasitic herbs. When you can buy the wormwood with the black walnut, with the clove, with the oregano, with the garlic, you've got a potent mixture. Parasites hate it. So it's an easy way to do it. And there's all kind of good parasite yeah, things too, with that. Can you like drink it as a... Oh, it's just a capsule. They put oh, it in it's a capsule. capsule. Okay. Yeah. I know you can get those in supplements and most of those are found in every, yeah. you know, CBS But when you combine them, it works more synergistically for a lot of patients. We, we used to use those years ago until we came out with these super dewormers like finbendazole and ivermectin. Those now, do you recommend people take those on an empty stomach in the morning or at night? Well, again, usually when they do parasite cleaning, you do it three times a day. And it's best to feed your parasites first before you feed you. And the parasites <laughs> love sugar. They love sugar. The more you eat sugar, the more you're asking for a parasite. Well, it's carbs and starches. So when you eat a lot of sugars and carbs and starches, you're empowering your parasites. Oh, interesting. But it's best to feed your parasites first with one of these dewormers. And then avoid the sugars and all the starches and carbs. Well, Good for you, bad for them. Okay, let's talk about hookworms. It was another thing we're seeing here. When you're out with your kid at the park and you got sand or dirt park and you're going barefooted, guess what's living there? And people are out walking their dogs or have their cats there and they're pooping and the eggs are there. And so the larvae from the hookworm, it literally burrs into the foot. It releases a enzyme that digests the skin. It's got a hook that hooks on and then it literally burrs in and it crawls under the skin. And this is a hookworm right here in the skin of an ankle right here, if you see. And they can right just there. hook into someone if you're just walking on the sand? Yes, so, it's got these special enzymes that digest your skin and it hooks in. The head of it's like a hook and then it kind of burrs in. So when it or, crawls up uh, under the skin. That's the hookworm right there burning up under the skin on the ankle. And that's and so it causes uh, it's raised red line that's associated with intense itching. And used to, when I was in practice years ago with family practice, I'd freeze them with ethylene chloride. I remember that. And it would kill them. Some, sometimes we'd miss them. But, uh, but, or you could use uh, some uh, dewormers. I, we didn't have a lot of the good dewormers cream, back then. You can put there's, on there's topical thiobendazole cream that you can use that kills them. But these, these are easy to get rid of. 
But that's the uh, cutaneous larva migraines that cro migraines that crawls. I, I imagine yeah. just wearing sandals on the beach would be a preventative. Yeah, measure exactly. Can take. You can wear flip flop sandals that'll protect you from it, and it's treated simply with albendazole or ivermectin. You use albendazole, 400 milligrams single dose kills them, or ivermectin, 12 milligrams single dose kills them, or they can get the uh, parapurge. Or they can use thiabendazole, which is a cream for cutaneous larval migraine. So, but, I, I gotta ask uh -huh. a question: These hookworms, can they do this on animals too? Do they get into the animals' paws and stuff? Usually, they're in the poop of the animal. They go into the poop, but I mean, the dogs are outside. But right, right. the animals, dogs eat poop, and they get the hookworm, and then they transfer it, it gets in their GI tract, and then they poop it out, and then they infect others. Then the eggs hatch and form larvae. The larvae are what gets in your skin and burrows up in your skin. And why That's does it enzyme. do that? Is it what is it's it? nature. That's I know, but if it, it because it needs the blood, it, it's human it's blood. It's the host, yeah. It's the host. The host. And, but it gets in there. Trying to figure out why. It's got a rich supply of parasite nutrient yeah. hosts. They do. So exactly. Been genetic they usually food. most live in the colon, your worms, but this is a rare one that moves through the skin. Okay. But it's usually in third world countries. Not so much here, mainly third world countries. Is that, that's not, you know, have you ever seen in third world countries where the children will have large stomachs? Oh, yeah. Where? They're infested with Ascaris worms many times. Okay. These are these big foot long worms and literally they become infested because their nutrition, water, the their nutrition is so poor. Their vitamin A and zinc is so poor. Their gut health is so poor. Let's talk about trichinosis from eating undercooked pork. We see a lot of this in this country. People don't, you know, they partially cook their pork, their bacon, their pork ribs and things like that. Pork is a very nasty animal that harbors parasites. You go to slaughtering houses, and I've talked to people that work in slaughterhouses. They say the pigs are the worst. We, when we slice those intestines open, the tapeworms are flying all over the place, they say. So, again, they're very unclean animals. It talks about in Leviticus chapter 11, how these animals are unclean, pork being one of the worst. Trichinosis worms cause trichinosis. We get it by eating raw or undercooked pork. Also, you get it from wild animals like bear and elk, wild boar and deer and moose. So if you don't cook it, you got to cook it to 160 degrees for the whole through and through the meat, not just for a short period of time, through and through, and it kills all the parasites. Real important. The lar larvae of trichinosis is encased, is encased in the muscles. It, it literally travels from the intestinal tract through the lymphatics and blood to the muscles and its preferential places in the muscles where it insists. So, not, so if it's a fatty piece of meat, it may not be in that, but it, if it's all the tough part of the meat, well, yeah, it's more but, likely to be. But bad. if you cook the uh, pork real good, it'll kill the larvae in the cyst. The larvae gets in the cyst. And then when you eat the uh, meat that's not totally cooked, the larvae literally comes out of that cyst in your intestines, goes in and in, in from your intestine, penetrates that one cell barrier into your blood and travels to your muscles and infects your muscles. So that's how it causes survives. tremendous pain and swelling in the muscles. Well, the cyst and acts as a coating, as a shield when you're cooking yeah, it. Yeah, you're right. And sure. So that makes sense. It can. Why you have to cook through it. Bears that have this sure. really bad. Bears are infested with this usually. We're not supposed to eat bears. Uh-uh. But they form. Meredith, is there a question that you have as upon well, you're sitting here and I'll, you've got a little I'm sorry, you know? Meredith. I, I know you're Dominic. It's so, like, <laughs> I'm sure they're sitting in. Take it in. This is a topic she's not very fond of. I'm going to go get Pero. But you know what it does make me think because you are a therapist and you see many children with trauma um, at my dad's practice. Seizures. You were it's, talking about that uh, earlier. Parents with seizures. You know, two different people whose babies are having seizures and they can't figure out why. Uh, it can be toxoplasmosis or it can be the pork tapeworm traveling to the brain causing neurocystosarcosis, which and how is babies rare in this country. Yeah, but how? Toxoplasma from cats. Oh, my. I need to ask. Them. And you can do a PCR test for toxoplasma of their serum and see if they have it, or they can do, have that done by the doctor. And if that's the case, that's easy now, to correct. Now, uh, pork uh, trichinosis is easily treated with mabendazole, which is Vermox, 200 to 400 milligrams three times a day, but it takes about 13 days total to clear it. It takes a while. 
This is in, it's in the muscle and it's hard to get to to ki kill the thing. Also, albendazole, 400 milligrams, a higher dose twice a day for 14 days. Or again, you can use the fenbendazole with ivermectin, but it's going to take a little longer. That's in the parapurge. I wonder if, since there's that parasite that can cause Alzheimer's type issues in children as well, could it cause you know, uh, developmental delays that causes all kinds of seizures and yes, things like that. But not yeah. just that, but, um, you know, uh, making them frustrated, angry, I have an outburst, you know, some kids can Yeah, it causes almost like an autism picture for some. Yes. So uh, there are no proven herbal therapies for trichinosis from the trichinella uh, roundworm. So, so oregano, the herb, clover, herbals don't really clover. work for that. They can't get into the muscle where the problem is as well. Now, PCR testing of the stool is the best way to diagnose trichinosis, okay? Now, cystocercosis is the port tapeworm. I'm going from the roundworm to the tapeworm. This is another bad boy. And you get it from eating pork or eating wild boar or bear or deer or elk. That's how you get it. And uh, the larvae form cyst in the muscle similar to trichinosis. They're real similar. One's a, a roundworm, the other's a tapeworm. And they also can get in the CNS, and they can calcify. And you, get, and you can also get it from eating food or drinking water contaminated with port tapeworm eggs. It's more common in third world countries. It's not so common here in the U.S., thank goodness. But like I said, we had a missionary that got this uh, in the brain and formed uh, these calcified cysts in the it brain. Right here. And here's a picture of an MRI, and it shows these black spots. These are the calcified cysts in the brain here. See, it's just died, and she lost a lot of her memory, but we got her memory restored. Yeah, you can see these black spots here, and these are the calcifications. Right, and here's another, which oh, is, this. this is another. Uh, and what's amazing is our brain has. MRI, so here's the MRI. See all the spots right here? It has them pointed out there. See, I'm calcified, the bright, white, that's calcified. What's amazing so, is our brain has the ability to wall it off and to yeah. heal. And, uh, and so she, her memory came back. Here's what tapeworms look like. This one right here. It's this picture right here at the top. And that's what your tapeworms look like. But the port tapeworm tends to get in the muscle and forms those uh, cysts in the muscles and severe muscle aches and pain. And this is what they look like, fully mature, grown. This is a roundworm down below. This is uh, this is Ascaris worm, but that's the port tape. That's the tapeworm. They look different. They grow in your intestines. And so, again, we don't see, thank goodness, a lot of tapeworms here in this country. I have seen a lot of social media videos of, um, like, uh, little insects that these come out of, you know, uh, like crane mantises and things. I don't, I'm not sure some... I'm not seeing that. But, <laughs> but the treatment is real simple. It's, it's albendazole or praziquantel. And that's the treatment for neurocystocercosis, which is rare. People have a problem but, gaining weight that are real thin. Oh, that's ascaris, yes. They cannot you gain You look for weight. these ascaris worms right here. These are round worms. They're a foot long, and they are so, four, about four million Americans get these yearly, that many. And look for them where? In your stool? In your stool. Okay. Here's how you tell, guys. And you they go eat get the some, food, and that's why they can't gain weight. Yeah, get some pumpkin seeds. The, the, uh, you know, roasted pumpkin seeds, take uh, one or two teaspoons in the evening, and then look at your stool in the morning. And then take fiber if you want, but just, if you want to take a little more, take one teaspoon, two, uh, twi I one a day, then get it twice a day, <laughs> then try it three times a day. If you take too much, you'll, it'll form like a laxative, but literally they detach and you'll see if you have worms. It, they usually come out. So don't consume much in your diet, just consume pumpkin seeds for a day. No, for a few days. For a few days. You need to do it for about Brain. five to all days. Their yeah. And then some people just, foods? you can do it. You can do it. Just do it at night okay. before you go to bed. No, no, you can eat other foods. Out. Just now, include that as part of your. Now, ascaris worms are real common. About four million Americans here in the U.S. have this worm. And they usually, most people don't get symptoms. You get it from ingesting it from either the water, the, uh, the food that we eat can have the worm eggs on, especially if handled by a foreigner who doesn't wash his hands. He's come from Mexico or Honduras, or he's come from Guatemala. He's got the worm eggs on his hands and transfers it to the food and you eat the eggs and you get the ascaris. And uh, that's real, it's really common. And the larvae hatch in the small intestines and they migrate to the lungs. They stay in the lungs about two weeks and they can cause a cough, some shortness of breath and wheezing. And then a lot of people cough up 
the larvae and then they swallow and then they go back into the stomach and then they mate and they have eggs and they have up to 200,000 eggs. Each female can lay 200,000 eggs. You know, it's interesting that our the hydrochloric acid in our bodies and in our stomach uh, is- Well, it helps. It does help. It does. It slows down the growth of it. Is that- Yes. Hydrochloric acid can uh, kill uh, a lot of parasites. It can. But here's what the Ascaris worms do in your intestine that can cause it. Not, not everyone. So a lot of people have no symptoms unless they're infested. If they're infested, they usually get abdominal pain, bloating, swelling, nausea, vomiting, loss of appetite, and unexplained weight loss. And many of these are constipated. So those worms keep crawling and they got these big old bloated, swollen abdomens. And um, as far as the treatment is simple, it's albendazole, 400 milligrams, just one time dose. Now for, for pinworms, it's 100 milligrams albendazole. For Ascaris, these long, foot long, uh, you know, round worms is 400 milligrams at one dose. That kills them. That's okay. not easy to do. Okay. How do you know which one you have? Do you do a stool analysis? You can. Do a blood test? Or you can do a PCR test. We a can do PCR a PCR test. PCR test will tell you which on one. On the stool, and it'll okay. tell me which one it is. It sounds like we keep going back to the same type of test. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And the same type simple. of treatment. Exactly. It's real easy. That's good. And then you can also treat with mabendazole or fenbendazole, or like we talked about, parapurge. If you don't want to go to a doctor, just do that. Now, herbs that treat, we talk about the different combos of herbs. Herbs. Now let's talk about many things that are commonly mistaken for worms, like undigested kernels of corn can look just like a worm. Mucus threads can look like a worm. Or these extended release medicines like extended release metformin, extended release blood pressure meds can look like a worm. So it's many times not a worm. Now the worst parasite infection is the amoeba, the brain eating amoeba. And it causes fatality, and we usually get it through swimming in lakes, ponds, or rivers, or streams in the summer, especially with skiing or diving. When you ski or dive, that water, that infected water with the Neglaria amoeba gets up in through your sinuses and goes right into the brain and causes a horrible brain infection. Or you can get it through using neti pots with tap water. See, tap water has chlorine, but it doesn't kill all the bacteria or the neglaria, and it can get into the brain. You shoot, so you, anytime you use a neti pot or navage, you should use distilled water so you don't get this horrible brain infection. It's 97% fatal. And so critically important that we avoid that. And uh, when, you're, when you're skiing or diving in warm lakes, wear nose plugs, real important, so it can't get up in your nose. So again, it's just real simple. Practice routine bathing and showering with hot water. Practice frequent hand washing for 20 seconds. Make sure you have your pets checked for parasites regularly. Follow deworming recommendations. And be sure to eat clean, properly prepared food that's adequately cooked and clean water, and then you can prevent most parasites. I wonder if dogs, when they go to dog pounds, dog, uh, you know, when we travel, uh, if dogs exchange it amongst themselves. Oh, absolutely. Just one dog. Dogs will eat each other's poop, and they get their that parasites. requires yeah. it to be checked. I think it's every six months. Now, again, check all of okay. them. Yeah, we can do simple them. things, too. Again, just take a good multi. We've got a wonderful multivitamin. Take a good probiotic. Take fiber and take pumpkin seeds. That protects you from it. Okay, that's a great... Get the pumpkin seeds just sold out of every grocery <laughs> store. We're delicious. <laughs> Not pumpkin seed oil, pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds. So next Halloween, if you see the pumpkins, you can buy that, get the seeds, roast them, and get rid of your parasites. Dad, this has been a phenomenal show. I'm so excited that we have some good solutions for, this, uh, for these parasites. Uh, we will see you next time. Stay connected. We're going to talk about kidney disease. Yeah. Is that right? Chronic kidney disease. Chronic yeah, kidney major disease. Problem. If you have a loved one or friends with kidney disease, share this. Let them know. We want to get them healing. We'll see you next time.